Hello, everybody, and welcome to this session. On today's session, we are looking at how you can become a transformational leader, how to become a transformational leader. I want to say that in this particular dispensation, one of the most important skills that every leader must develop and know is this transformational leadership skill. And this starts from the kind of mindset and the attitude that you have as far as this leadership style is concerned. If you are going to be a successful professional, you are going to be a successful entrepreneur, I want to tell you that in this century, you must master and understand the art of transformational leadership. And in today's session, I will be unraveling some things that are critical for you to understand and to do so you can begin to manifest in this dimension. It is critical to actually dig deep and understand the process that you can go through to becoming a transformational leader. And I want to tell you that this is a continuous process. You don't learn how to become a transformational leader overnight or in a few minutes or in a few hours of training. It is for you to understand the kind of mindset that you must embody, the kind of attitude, character, the way you look at things, and you begin to go through that process, that that. that process of intentionally becoming this transformational leader. Now, before we look at transformational leadership and the process of becoming, let us look at the key word. What is the meaning of transformation? What is the meaning of transformation? Transformation is a significant and fundamental change or a shift. That means there should be a significant change, a significant shift. That means if, if you say that something has gone through transformation, there should be a difference from what it used to be and what it is right now. And this transformation, this significant shift, can begin to happen, can, can only happen as a result of a new form a new form, a new structure, a new character. So if I am saying that you have gone through transformation, one of the things I'm saying is there is a complete shift in your character. You used to be like this, but now because you have gone through transformation, you have become this. So it involves that complete or radical alteration of something's appearance, nature, and essence, right? Yes, that's transformation. There should be that complete change. It could be your appearance. Trans like, like, you know, I I imagine your high school uh, um, classmate sees you 10 years after. They are going to see a transformed person because you, are, you no longer appear like the same kid you were in high school. Maybe you have money, you, you have uh, you, you dress better, you have better shoes, you drive a better car, you're taller, you're you, you're chubby, you know, things transformation, the appearance is different. Even your essence, you have become better, your essence, your purpose, your passions, the way you look at things, the way you talk, the way you think, the places you have gone to, transformation has happened. Therefore, transformational leaders are those people who have a true vision for themselves. This is vision is the one of the most important things that validate who a transformational leader is. This is where I am going and I am so determined to cross a shift I am willing to change my essence, my character, my nature, so I can achieve this vision. They have a vision either for themselves, for their projects, or for their organizations, and they know how to inspire people to believe in that vision. Yes, 
Because transformational leaders understand that they cannot make their vision come to pass on their own. So they also have the ability, they have the character to inspire people to be committed to the vision. And most importantly, a transformational leader is emotionally committed to the mission. You are emotionally committed to the mission, to your business mission, to your project mission, to your personal life mission. You are emotionally connected to it. You are not just passive. You are not just sitting on the fence. You are not just doing things for doing sake. No, you have this high level, massive commitment to their mission. Because this massive commitment enhances your dedication to transformation, enhances your dedication and willingness to cause a shift. That is why having emotional commitment to the mission becomes important. Are you a transformational leader? Do you have a vision, a true established vision for yourself, for your project, for your organization, for your business? Do you know how to inspire people to believe in this vision and to work and make sure that this vision comes to pass? Are you highly massively committed to your mission, then you are a transformational leader. Therefore, transformational leadership encourages employees and people to create fundamental change, changes leading to growth. Now, this is one thing that is very critical. You don't only change when it comes to transformational leadership, no. If you are truly going through the process of transformational leadership, the outcome of the change that you're creating is growth. In transformational leadership, change is not necessary if growth is not possible. So growth must be the outcome of change. So in transformational leadership, as change is happening, we should be seeing growth. If you say you are a transformational business leader, we should be seeing business growth. If we say that you are a transformational professional, we should be seeing growth in your career and in the business or the company where you work. If you say that you are going through transformation as a person, we should be seeing some growth in your life. Even if you're a husband and you're a wife, if you say that you are going through transformation, we should see growth in you as a husband, being a better husband, a better father, a better wife, a better mother. Growth is the outcome of change that results from transformational leadership. Leaders who adopt this practice recognize that growth depends on its ability to embrace change. So you don't embrace change because people are talking about it. You embrace change because you know that as you embrace this change, growth will manifest. In other words, transformational leaders are not afraid of change. They love change. They love to create change. They love to initiate change. They love to embrace change. You cannot be a transformational leader and you resist change. It doesn't mean that you will not be afraid of change. But because you have a transformational leadership mindset, even when change is coming and you feel afraid, you take steps. To embrace that change because you desire to see some growth to manifest. For keys, you need to master. Follow me very carefully. If you want to be a transformational leader and get results from yourself and your team, there are four key behaviors that you must master as far as being a transformational leader is concerned. Let's look at these behaviors. Very powerful. When you understand and master these behaviors, I tell you, you will be a very successful transformational leader. Yes, yes. Follow me very carefully. You need to make sure that you are, you're, you are noting down these four key behaviors because you need to master them and live them. Even your personal life. And let me tell you, 
every successful transformational leader, you will see it first in their personal life. It is difficult to create transformation that is sustainable as a CEO of a business if that transformation is not reflecting in your personal life. Let us jump into the four keys. Ready? Good. Let's move. Number one idealized influence yes for you to be a transformational leader you must know how to idealize influence and there are two ways to do this number one be a role model and how can you be a role model if you are not really successful personally i'm not talking about success in material terms i'm talking about success in your character qualities habits how you live your life the on there are two primary ways that you can idealize influence. Be a role model. Be a role model um, in your community. Be a role model in your organization. Be a role model as a leader. Be a role model wherever you find yourself. Lead by example. Embody the qualities you want your team to practice. Be a role model. If you're talking about punctuality, make sure you're coming to work on time. If you're talking about diligence and commitment, make sure you are diligent and you are, commitment. you are committed. There is no way you can practice or effectively idealize influence without being a role model. You know, people live life and they, they, they want people to honor them, to celebrate them, to like them. There is no way people can like you, love you, honor you, celebrate you if you cannot influence them. There are some people that they experience this because people are afraid of them because they're in a particular position. The day they lose that position, nobody will like them, nobody will honor them. But there are some people that they know how to idealize influence that with that position, people still love them, people honor them. People celebrate them. Do you know why they have become a role model? And how do you become a role model? Lead by an example. Embody the qualities you want to see people around you practicing. Number two, charisma. Yes. For you to idealize influence, you need to carry charisma. In order to see, you need to love life. The way you live life, don't, don't move around angry, sad, depressed, funny, having this funny, funny facial expression. No, 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 no. You need to carry some level of charisma. Be personal with your people. Be relatable. Create fun. See that picture on the right? That's me in black, black. Right? Charisma. Encourage enthusiasm. Enjoy people. You cannot lead a people you don't enjoy. And people cannot love you and like to be around you if you are not relatable. If you don't carry some level of charisma, enthusiasm. This is far beyond being introvert and extrovert. You can still be an introvert and you carry charisma. When it's time to get things done, you are there. You are relatable. You are enthusiastic. You are passionate. You carry some fire. You get a point. You carry some level of fire and you bring to the table. Number two, the second behavior that you must master and live by for you to become a transformational leader, inspirational motivation. Inspirational motivation. How can you achieve inspirational motivation? How can you achieve inspirational motivation? Number one, have a vision. Number one, have a vision. There's no way you can inspire people without a vision. Have a clear vision. Know the values you lead by and where you want to take the team and the organization. People love when they know where they are going to. Let me tell you. If you have people in a business, like let's, let's say you're a startup entrepreneur, one of the best ways that you can give people hope to believe in you and your startup is let them know that you are taking them somewhere. Is, is you need more than money to keep people around you. You need more than money to keep people around you. Have a clear vision, a written, documented vision. And then you can present that vision. Know how to communicate that vision. Lay out why your strategy helps the greater good. 
Let them know how your vision, how the vision can help them grow, help the community, help the nation. Let them know how they can be part of it. So you need to master inspirational motivation. Number three, intellectual stimulation. Yes. For you to build and become a transformational leader, you need to master this fourth behavior, this third behavior. This key third behavior, intellectual stimulation. You must know how to encourage yourself to be creative and encourage the people that come around you to be creative. It flows from the top. If you are not creative, people around you will not be creative. Creative thinking can push employees beyond the status quo. There is no way you can experience transformational leadership if stagnant in their thinking, if you are stagnant in your thinking. So if intellectual stimulation is the intentional attitude of encouraging yourself, challenging yourself, challenging the people around you to practice creative thinking, to think beyond the status quo, to bring extra value to the field, to the job, to the business, to whatever you're doing. Challenge employees to go beyond the norms. Challenge them to think outside of the job description. Challenge them to go above and beyond. Challenge them to use their brains for the greater good of the business. You can do this by training them. You can do this by buying them books and buying them courses. You can do this by giving them new experiences. If you can send them out of the country, do it. Whatever that you can do, intellectually stimulate yourself and your employees. This is important for transformational leadership. And the fourth key behavior that you must master if you must become a successful transformational leader, truly get to know your people. It is called individualized consideration. Yes. You cannot lead a people you don't know them. This will start from yourself. How much do you know about yourself? How much do you know about your employees? How much do you know about the people that you lead? How much do you know about the core team members around you? You need to practice individualized transformation, consideration, sorry. Right? It's very important. Therefore, understanding personalities, strengths, and motivations will help you lead with empathy. Yes. When you understand the personalities of the people that you work with, of the people that you lead, when you understand their strength, you understand what motivates them, what inspires them, their passion and all of that, it plays a big role in creating transformation. Develop trust. It is difficult for you to practice transformational leadership if the people that you lead don't trust you and you don't trust them. Positive relationships lead to increased buy-in from employees and decisions can be made quicker. So develop trust. Trust will lead to support. Trust will lead to effective decision-making. Trust will lead to diligence, commitment, dedication to result, productivity. And these are the outcome of individualized consideration which leads to incredible transformational leadership. Let's look at the building blocks to becoming a profession, a, a transformational leader. What are the building blocks? We have seen the four keys, which are very important, four key behaviors that you must embody and leave them. Make sure you spend some time and let those four key behaviors be part and parcel of you. When you master those four key behaviors and begin to leave them and you add many of these blocks that we are gonna look through, you will become an incredible transformational leader. And again, remember, 
you are not this not for you to learn this and overnight become a transformational leader transformation takes time this is the foundation. These are the things that you need to know. Then you begin to put them to work every day. For example, we spoke about intellectual stimulation. You don't intellectually stimulate yourself and your people in a few hours. It's going to be a consistent process. You can, even you can go through the process of intellectual stimulation for years and years. Personally, for me, I've been going through the process of intellectual stimulation for 10 years. Every year, I read at least 25 books. I take a course, I do this, I'm always intellectually stimulating myself. So I'm going to be a good trainer, excellent consultant. I have clients almost all over the world. I need to always be on the game. So you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't become overnight. But the good news is when you know these things and begin to live them, make them a lifestyle, you are way, way, way going to be a very powerful and successful transformational leader to your industry and whatever that you are doing. Let us quickly look at the building blocks you need to becoming a transformational leader. Number one, captivate. Block number one, captivate. Captivating requires creating a desirable vision and then articulating that vision in a way that brings individuals and their unique skills into the future you hope to create. We saw this earlier. I said that the core, one of the core foundational elements that makes you a transformational leader is you have an established vision, a written documented vision. But that is one thing. You need to learn how to captivate people to believe and work for their vision. You need to know how to captivate people to buy into the vision and not only buy in, but they bring in their resources, they bring in their time, they bring in their skills, they bring in everything to contribute to that vision. Look at that last statement. Then articulating that vision in a way that brings individuals, brings them, brings them, and they don't, they, they come with something. They come with their unique skills into the future you hope to create. So there's a way that you captivate people to desire to be part of the future you desire to create. So not the first block, you must learn how to captivate people, articulate vision in a way that brings people. And there's no way you can captivate people if you are not charismatic, you are not enthusiastic, you are not excited about the vision. People will copy from you. If you don't work hard on the vision, they are going to be lazy on the vision. Right? Block number two, challenge. Yes. Challenging yourself and team requires promoting innovation, creativity, and problem solving. This block is very important. You must have an environment that challenge people to be creative, an environment that challenge people to be innovative, an environment that challenge people to solve problems, an environment that does not encourage averageness and status quo, an environment that positions people for a higher dimension of manifestation so if you are really going to challenge yourself and your team you need to make sure you promote innovation around you promote creativity around you promote the art of problem solving around you when these things these three elements are part and parcel of your lifestyle and culture you will always challenge yourself and run employees or the people that work in your vision, right? That's why it says it first requires creating a psychological safe environment in which individuals can be creative and not feel like they will face consequences for speaking up or sharing ideas. So you need to create an environment where people can feel challenged and they're excited to bring a lot of things on board, okay? The third block that you need, experimenting with new ideas and approaches. Yes. If you are going to be a transformational leader, you must be comfortable at experimenting. 
you must be comfortable at experimenting new ideas. Transformational leaders don't wait for things to be perfect before they do them. No. They are not, as we said earlier, you, you saw innovation and creativity. So you must be comfortable at ex anybody who likes innovation and creativity, they love experimentation. Because you don't just look, you don't just look at something for the first time and it's and 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 assume that it's going to be successful. You need to test it. The greatest innovators are people who test things. They experiment things. They, they, they don't just care away from new ideas. They don't just care away from new frameworks or new approaches. No, they experimented. If you are going to be a successful transformational leader, you must be comfortable at experimenting things that you are uncertain about. Don't just ignore them or, or, or be afraid of them. No, test it. See the outcome before you scale big. You experiment it. That's how you create transformation. They say new technology, try it out. Don't just ignore it and stand aside and be on the fence. No, experiment the new technology. See how it works. If it's important, you can now go big and invest on it. Don't just have one product as a business. You can experiment new ideas and new products. See how the market receives the product. If they are happy, you launch big. If they're not happy, you innovate, improve, test again. So you are always experimenting new ideas and new approaches. You need this block to become a transformational leader. Transformational leaders do not procrastinate and they do not wait for things to be perfect or they do not avoid getting things done because of uncertainty. They experiment and test new ideas, new approaches, and they move forward. Number four, persuasive change makers. Yes, Transformational leaders effectively persuade others and inspire them to embrace change. You must learn how to persuade people, your team members, project workers, volunteers, interns, anybody around you. It is your job to persuade and inspire them to embrace change. Let me tell you something. Many people are not comfortable with change. Even it's like even husband and wife. Sometimes you will need to convince your wife over something or before they can accept that you guys should do it. Even like friends, you need to convince because people are not blessed. They want to travel to a new country, to a new town and all of that. Because of uncertainty and fear, many people don't know how to embrace change. So as a transformational leader, you need to learn how to persuade people to embrace change. So you need to know how to communicate goals with them. You need to know, you need to consider their, their emotions, consider their thoughts, anticipate conflicts and goals that you need to address and all of that. But by all means, you need to learn how to persuade people to embrace change. So you are a persuasive change maker. You don't just ignore somebody because they resist the change. You don't just get angry because somebody is not doing what you wanted them to do. No, you need to walk them through. You need to help them. Everybody, we don't have the same mindset. And because you are a leader, you are an entrepreneur, you are a founder, or you are an executive, you are a professional, your mindset must have gone ahead. Or maybe you have a higher experience. You have a, you have a more advanced mindset than you are fellow team members. So you need to be, you, you, you need to calm down to their level, if I may say so, inspire them, persuade them, communicate with them the goals, let them see how their life can become better if they accept the change. Don't ignore them, don't shout, don't fight, don't just start barking like a dog, sorry to say. But what am I saying? Persuasive, become a persuasive change maker. Sit them down, communicate, let them understand the outcomes, the goals, the conflicts, whatever. This is very important. Number five, allow for intelligent risk. Yes, your path to transformation will most certainly have its fair share of failure. Be willing to consider those risks and what they might mean for the future of the organization. Yes, you must be willing to allow for intelligent risks. There is no transformation that will happen without risk. There is risk of failure. There is risk of losing money. 
There is risk of getting things wrong. There are a lot of risk involved as far as transformation is concerned. But you should not allow risk to stop you from going through transformation. So allow for intelligent risk. Analyze. Review. Minimize risk as much as you can, but don't avoid it. Have the courage to take the steps. Courage is when you do things afraid. Courage is when you do things when there is risk, but it's not doing things stupidly. Carry out the right research. Review carefully. Avoid because, you know, failing with things that you could have avoided is not taking risks. It's stupidity. But risk means that you genuinely assess all the risks involved, review everything, do proper research, and you know exactly what you're getting into. Taking risks without research, without review, without analysis, that is not risk. That is laziness and stupidity, and it's going to cost you a lot more than that. So allow for intelligent risk, and intelligent risk means you are willing to review, assess, analyze, and all of that. Number six, accept responsibility. Be ready to assume responsibility for each of your decisions. As simple as that. You cannot be a transformational leader when you reject and run away from responsibility. You are the manager, take responsibility. You are the CEO, take responsibility. In whatever that you do, assume responsibility. Assume responsibility. Assume responsibility. So it is very important for you to consciously and intentionally assume responsibility for what you are doing. So it is very important for you to actually think of that, okay? Accept responsibility, be comfortable at accepting responsibility. Do not uh, um, be that kind of person that runs away from responsibility. When you run away from responsibility, you are running away from transformation. Run towards responsibility. If something new works out, share the glory with the team. If it fails, stand up and take ownership. Your team will respect you. Transformational leadership. Number seven, there's something I call the 1% growth concept. A transformational leader understands consistent improvement. Many a times it's not about big improvement, but it's just the commitment. The concept of 1% growth concept is intentionally being committed in seeing growth happen. Remember, in transformational leadership, the outcome of change is growth. So you must be committed to growth no matter what. So with the 1% growth concept, it means if you improve your professional value on the 1% each day for the next 30 days, you will see a 30% increase in that dimension of your life, career, and business in only one month. So the 1% growth concept talks about the concept where a transformational leader is dedicated that no matter what happens, I will grow at least 1% every day. Because sometimes... People get reluctant and lazy because they are not seeing big growth, mighty growth, and all of that. No. Sometimes you can just be committed to little things that can lead to growth. 1% growth concept is critical. By all means, make sure you are growing. In conclusion, transformation can occur at various levels, such as personal, organizational, societal. But in all, we need to be transformational leaders at all levels. And transformational leader, uh, leadership can be driven by factors like technology. Yes, you can use technology to practice all of these things that I have said. You can use culture, leadership, environmental factors. All of these can lead to, can drive transformational leadership. And for you to become a transformational leader, it should be intentional. It should be intentional. You don't just wake up one morning and you become a transformational leader. You don't just wake up and you do you, 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 are, you are undulating. You are not consistent. 
is you should be intentionally consistent. After going through this program, through this session, make up your mind that you will be intentional at becoming a transformational leader. And it can be gradual or it can be sudden. It depends on where you are in your life and what you're looking at for some people. If they don't immediately start developing and practicing transformational leadership right now, their business will struggle, their careers will struggle. For some people, they just need to maintain a consistent 1% growth effort every day, every week, every month, whatever, and remain at the top. By all means, make sure that you are living a transformational lifestyle that will get you to the top. Thank you so much for being part of the session and part of the program. And I know that you have been transformed and I am waiting to see your great manifestation. God bless you. Take care.